Well, tonight we're so happy to have a number of guests with us. We're happy to have the children's choir from Uganda, the adult ensemble. We're also happy to have missionary uh, Skinner, Gary and Marilyn Skinner, who pastored that great church in Uganda. And then a friend of mine for many years, Gerald Morrison, also his wife, who's a friend, Ruth. And uh, our association goes back, I suppose, to so long I can't even remember. I don't think I can remember when I didn't know Gerald. And it's a delight to have these folk with us. Gerald is coming. He's going to introduce the choir and uh, Gary Skinner. But I think we should show a warm welcome to these folk who've come a long ways from Uganda tonight. Gerald. Thank you. <clears throat> You'll have to pardon my voice. I haven't been singing with the choir, but I've been talking about them so much I've lost my voice. However, it's a great joy for us to be here in Broadway Tabernacle again. It's been a number of years since I have been here personally, but we know the effects of this great missionary church that touches the lives and the ministries in many parts of the world. The Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada has just celebrated its 75th anniversary. And from day one, our fellowship has been a missionary fellowship. And we have sent many, many missionaries, and we are working now in 40 countries around the world. In the beginning, our primary responsibility was evangelism and planting church and training. But in recent years, with the many troubles that exist around the world today, we have become involved in meeting the need of the whole man. And through our emergency relief and development program, we have sent countless thousands of tons of food and many, many containers of clothing and so on to these needy areas, Africa in particular, has suffered from the aftermath of independence where they have had coups and counter coups. And today there are 26 million refugees that are driven from their homes and from their countries. And many of them are suffering beyond description. I know you see it on the television screen, but if you were to walk amongst them, you couldn't do it without breaking down and weeping. And one of the areas of recent emphasis is amongst the children, because 55% of Africa's population is under 15 years of age. And the scourge of AIDS has affected the central part of the continent. In Malawi last year, they estimated that 80% of all babies born were HIV. And so it's a rather desperate situation. But our fellowship has started the Child Care Plus program, and you'll see the fruit of it right here this evening, how that God has enabled more than 1,800 people to pick up 3,000 children in various countries around the world and in giving them a minimal support that will help them with clothing, education, food, but most of all, to hear about Jesus. And so it's my delight this evening to introduce the Watoto, which means children, the Watoto uh, Choir, and I'm going to call up one of the pastors of the Kampala Pentecostal Church, Pastor Irene. She's going to in more detail, introduce the group. And here they come. Will you welcome them? Good evening. Oh, is anyone there? Good evening. We're very happy to be with you here this evening, and we're so happy to be in this great country and moving in many churches and meeting the people that have been giving and enabling people like Pastor Gary Skin and his family to come to Uganda and have been such a blessing to us. 
Thank you very, very much. I know I stand here to represent many people. I know what sitting under Pastor Gary Skinner's teaching has done to my life. And I know I'm not the only one who can say it, and I represent all those people, and I say thank you very much. And may I encourage you not to give up with missions. God bless you very, very much. We've come all the way from Uganda to tell you about, to, to make known the, cons the, the fact that there are many children that are suffering around the world. And I'm so glad that there's Ch Child Care Plus. And I want to share with you what Child Care Plus is doing in Uganda. Uh, since Child Care Plus was introduced in Uganda, it was introduced because there was a great need in Uganda. We had many orphans. Um, in a population of 17 million, 1.5 are, are the registered orphans that we have in our country, or parentless children, should I say. And 800,000 of the 1.5 million are below the age of 15. Now, this has been primarily due to AIDS. AIDS has hit our country so bad. You talk about AIDS in Uganda and everyone will understand. You've either lost a sister, a brother, a son, a daughter, or your parents, and everyone knows what AIDS is. Uh, for every, I was talking to a friend of mine before we came, and he's a doctor, and he was telling me that for every four women that come to, to the antenatal clinic, one of them is HIV positive, and that means a lot. And because of this, we have all these orphans in our country. And when you look at the whole situation, it looks so dark and cloudy. But we've come to tell you here this evening that there is hope in Jesus Christ. There is hope in Jesus Christ. I strongly believe that if we reach the children that are between the ages of 6 and 15, who are AIDS-free now, then we have a bright future for, for Uganda. And I'm committed to that. And I'm so glad that Child Care Plus is supporting now 250 children in our country. It's because somebody somewhere has given $25 per month to support a child. And these children here are a representation of those. The program is operated in two branches. Some of the children stay with their extended family, with their relatives who are willing to keep them. But some children are such a burden to the families and they are rejected. Now we get those children and we put them in homes. And right now we have four homes. And in those homes are eight children with a mother who cares for them. But most important of all, I have the honor and privilege of meeting these kids in the homes on a weekly basis and sharing with them the love of Christ. And I know what Christ has done to the lives of these children. I know what these children were when, before, and I know what they are and what Christ has done. And I want to tell you that it's worth it. It's worth the world to share Christ with these children. And so today, as the minister, as we talk about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, my prayer is that Jesus will be glorified and you will be ministered to. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Irene. Now, kids, we want these fine, refined Canadians to act like Ugandans tonight, don't we? Yes. yes. Hmm? yes. So yes. shall we show them how we do it? Yes. yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Can you think they should practice it now? Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hmm, 20%, eh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 18%. Whoa, we're getting worse here. Should we try one more time? Yeah. Yeah. God is so good. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's much better. I think they're ready. God of our salvation, can we see the 
that our God is faithful. Yesterday, today, forever. Let every tribe and every time come to the sun is born. Those who call on him. Let's do it. Lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. For in his love we can rejoice. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. For in his love we can rejoice. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. For in his love we can rejoice. Lift up your eyes. Lift up your voice. Lift up your heart. I'm so glad to be here with you this evening, and I'm so happy that we are all gathered here to worship the living God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Bible tells us that he reigns in majesty, and Revelations tells us that he sits on the throne, and to him be glory, honor, and praise. Amen? Amen. Join us. Join us as we worship that living God.
The next song that we are going to sing is Satan we back in your mina and Yesu. And it means that Satan go behind me. I want to go ahead with Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As Christians, we are fully aware that what Jesus did on the cross has sent us free from our sins. And I know that Jesus loves me very much. And I want to give him the rest of my life. May God bless you. We we setani. We back in your mama na yenda na Yesu. We we setani. We back in your mama na yenda na Yesu. We we setani. We back in your mama na yenda na Yesu. We we setani. We back in your mama na yenda na Yesu. Oh, we ya ya. Lord 
Kids, oh. you're welcome, Gloria. God bless your little heart. Well, do you think these very dignified Canadians can sing it as well as we Ugandans? No. Well, <laughs> you're probably right, but I think we should let them try, don't you? Yes. All right, this is your chance to prove that you qualify to go to heaven, all right? Except you'll be converted and become like a little child. Come on, stand to your feet. Exercises for the week, here we go. <laughs> all right, the kids will show you how. You follow them. Yeah, do us for Jesus. Are you ready? Everybody, especially the half in the back. Tell me whose side are you leaning on? Whose side are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. Tell me whose side are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. I want to know whose side are you leaning on? Leaning on the Lord's side. And I'll live, I'll live, I'll live, I'll live. Praise, I'll praise, I'll praise, I'll praise. 
great job. Well, do you think they did it as good as we did? No. No. No, Stephen, I, I, I'm with you. They didn't do quite as well, but they did try, didn't they? Why don't you give them a good clap as they sit, sit down for having try? God bless you.
I'm very glad to be here with you in Canada. We would like to sing for you a song called Zia Hamba Kwenyeri Kwekos. Zia Hamba Kwenyeri Kwekos means walking in the light of God. Walking in the light of God means following the commandments of God. Though I am a child, I have decided to follow the commandments of God. I hope the song blesses you. Fetch 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's keep quiet here. It seems we are not, are we ministering or what? Praise God. Amen. Yeah, in Africa we believe in shouting unto the Lord. Yeah. Yes, we do, don't we? Yeah, we yes. Amen. Absolutely. We believe in shouting unto the Lord and it's biblical. So we have to stand and, okay, praise God. Amen. You may have problems in heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, well, well. My name is Ken, and I am a builder. And I really thank God so much for giving me the opportunity of building the homes in which these lovely children stay in. And during this time, I had the privilege of meeting each of them, and they've really challenged my life, honestly. And I would like to call up one of the boys to just tell us about himself and his experience. Hello. Can you tell us about yourself? My name is Tony, and I live in Kansanga Child Care Plus Home. Before Uncle Ken built that home for me, I was living in someone's garage with my mom, two sisters, and brother. So, Tony, you are happy that Child Care Plus was able to build for you this home. Tony, you've talked about your mother, but what about your father? My father died when I was only two years old, so I never knew him. But I have a father in heaven who loves me very, very much. My heavenly father is my very best friend. Well, that's great, Tony, that your heavenly father you know about your Heavenly Father, do you? Uh, Tony, you've talked about your Heavenly Father. Did you know that he can make your life shine for him so brightly in Uganda and even for all these people here in Canada? Did you? Yes, I know that because Jesus is my Savior, all of the darkness that used to be in my life has been just away. That's great, Tony. You know, it's just the same like a candle that shines in the dark. And um, I wrote a song about that. 
I think you should sing it for these people here. Amen. Go ahead. glad that all over the world the gospel of the father of love is being preached yes. everywhere in Africa, in South America in Asia, in Europe, in America everywhere, in Australia the gospel of Christ is being preached and it's a gospel of love I'm so glad that I and the children and all these people are part of the people who are spreading the gospel to the end, to the rest of the earth Canada first and um, 
when Jesus was going in heaven, he told his disciples that go ye into all the world and preach the good news. So when you see the gospel being preached to the ends of the earth, we are reminded of one thing, our hope that Jesus is coming back very, very soon. Yes. And that's our hope, that's our joy that we shall meet him and be with him forever. No more tears. No more heartaches. But we have one challenge left before us, and that's the command that Jesus gave us to preach the good news to the ends of the earth. And I want to challenge you with one verse in the Bible, because so many times we may sit next to a person who is hurting, and we are ashamed to tell them about the gospel of love. We are ashamed to tell them that Jesus loves them, they might have never heard of that gospel of Christ. But there's a, there's a verse in the Bible that says that, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. We're an anchor for those who are hurting. We're a harbor for those who are lost. Sometimes it's not always easy bearing Calvary's cross. We've been ridiculed by those who don't know him and mocked by those who don't believe still i love standing up for my jesus for the things that he's done for me that's why i am not ashamed of the gospel the gospel of jesus christ no mercy for all the love that he's shown in my life. I see for thanks just doesn't say how I am feeling. Oh, I get tears in my eyes. So as for me, I'm going to keep on believing in the one who's been so faithful to me. Not out to please this whole world around me. I've got my eyes, I've got my eyes fixed on eternity. That's why I am not ashamed of the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I am not afraid to be counted. But I'm willing to give my whole life. See, I'm ready to be all that he wants me to be. And give up the wrong for the right. I am not ashamed of the good
God. Amen. Amen. My name is Grace. I thank God for my being here in Canada. Let me call upon Martin's sister, Gloria. Hi, are you, Gloria? I'm fine. How are you, Grace? Can you tell the people here the last song you are going to see? Yes, it says some of mother to show me the love of Jesus. Like the orphans, like the poor and the fatherless. That's what child care plus is doing for you and me. Like my sponsor Sharon, like my sponsor Rose Nile. Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 verse 14, Let the little children come to me. That's the love of Jesus. May God bless you. of Watoto, we want to thank you for showing the children of the world the love of Jesus, and may God bless you. The last song that you heard was written and played by an 18-year-old boy, my son. He's going to Bible school, second year. 
I love him with all my heart. Sometimes I love him so much it hurts. All the music that you heard tonight was played on that keyboard over there and sequenced by that boy, my son. You know, when I look at his life, I think that's what little boys should grow up to be, happy, whole, healthy, well-balanced, and with a future. But I am here to stand before you tonight and to tell you that there are literally millions and millions of little boys and girls who don't have a hope in life unless somebody bothers to care. We've had the privilege as go of going as missionaries around the world, taking the most wonderful message, the most wonderful news that anybody could ever hear, the news that when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He'll wash your sins away, He'll give you a brand new life, and you can have the promise that because Jesus rose from the dead, you can live also with Him forever and forever. But when we get there and we tell that wonderful story and that wonderful news to many people, they receive it, and yet we see them in their hurts and their wounds and their brokenness, battered and bruised by the circumstances of life. And we simply cannot stand by and do nothing. See, I believe with all of my heart that when we fall in love with God, that he wants us to fall in love with one another as the church of Jesus, and then he wants us to begin to care for the people that are hurting and bruised. Jesus told the story of a man who was on the road of life from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was beaten, bruised, and battered, and left for dead, stripped naked. Everything that he had was stolen from him. And along came the religious community of that day and passed him by without even giving him hardly a glance. But along came Jesus, or rather the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan who was despised reached down and picked him up and met his needs. Jesus told that story for a very good reason. He was answering a lawyer's question. The lawyer said, what's the greatest law? Jesus said, love. Love your neighbor as yourself. He wanted to justify himself, and so he said, who's my neighbor? Your neighbor is the man next door who's going through an ugly divorce and doesn't have anybody's shoulder to cry on. Your neighbor are the children in your community who come from homes where there isn't a father or a mother right here in Canada. Your neighbor is someone who's fighting with substance or alcohol abuse and doesn't seem to be able to get out of the hole into which they are. We're not here to judge. We're here to give God's love. We need to be so careful that we don't pass through life concerned about spiritual truth, but not living the truth of God's love. See, friends, it doesn't matter how big your church is and what color the carpet is on the floor and how thick the padding is on the pew in which you sit. It really doesn't matter to God whether you th wear a three-piece suit or you come to church in your shorts. What God really cares about is whether you are living the life that Jesus gave us to live, a life of love. He demonstrated it when he left the glory of heaven and he stepped out onto the, this old earth and he healed the bruised and the, the broken and the wounded of society by dying on the cross and showing a way of life that would revolutionize this globe if we'd only allow him to change our hearts. So as missionaries, when we stand on the other side of the waters and we see the little children, our hearts ache. Our hearts are bruised. I want to know, you to know tonight that I'm not ashamed to tell you I've said all of that to ask you to give some money to help us reach those people. The money that you'll give tonight will go to South America where our missionaries, like in Brazil, are meet m literally all kinds of street children. In Rio de Janeiro alone, there are two and a half million boys and girls that live on the streets of the city and sleep on the streets at night, who rummage through the garbage bins of the restaurant trying to find something to eat, who survive by child prostitution. Somebody needs to reach them, and we're trying to do that. 
Your money will go to Hong Kong where there are schools that we're holding for the underprivileged. Or perhaps it'll go to India where uh, we have a missionary who started schools for little boys and girls who are underprivileged and trying to give them some start in life. Your money will go to Africa where there are millions of boys and girls who have been chased away from their homes by war. They're the innocent victims of the problems that we as adults have made. Your money goes to feed them and give them a nourishing meal in the churches that we have started in those refugee camps. The money that you will give tonight will go to Rwanda, where we are helping along with many other organizations to help the little boys and girls who tonight went to bed after another fruitless day of searching for their parents with very little traces of hope left. Your money will go tonight to Uganda, where I have the privilege of telling the good news that Jesus changes lives. It will go to help us start homes for some of the one and a half million children who are parentless due to the AIDS virus that is literally decimating our country. I'm not ashamed to ask because I believe that just like the Good Samaritan, Jesus came, or the Good Samaritan who went to the inn and he said to the innkeeper, here, I give you this battered soul. I give you all of the resources that you need in order to meet his need. I'm going away, but I'm coming back, and I will reward you for all that you've done. Jesus is that good Samaritan who reaches down into the dust of life and picks up the battered and the bruised and the wounded and the hurting. And I found out that in every single meeting that we've gathered like this, there have been people who've been hurting and wounded, some who don't know Jesus. I want you to know Jesus cares. But just as Jesus gave, that, that good Samaritan gave that man to the innkeeper, so Jesus gives the hurting and the bruised and the wounded of society into the hands of the church, and he gives us all the resources that we need to do the job. He says, I'm going away, but I'm coming back, and I will reward you, and what a wonderful day that's going to be. Will you be able to say with me and many others, oh, Lord, it was a delight to touch the hurting, poor, needy souls that were all around me. And so tonight, we're asking you to give, to reach down into your purse and into your pocketbook and to take out a check and to write a sizable check. I'm not ashamed to ask you because I believe it's in the heart of the Father God. His heart is a heart that beats for the fatherless and the orphans. Real Christianity is to visit the fatherless and the orphans the widows, rather the fatherless and the widows in their destitution and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Father, tonight I ask as pastor comes that, Lord, you would provoke our hearts to generosity again. Thank you for the many, many, many times that we've been able to give. We thank you that around the world there are millions of people who now know Jesus. And there are many, many, many people who've experienced that helping hand of love that comes in Jesus' name. As we give tonight, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would take what we give and use it to bring honor to your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, people is what it's all about. Sometimes we're far more concerned in gathering things together for ourselves. But the happiest people in the world are people who are able to love mm -hmm. people. And um, if we don't, if we're not able to do that, we're, we're, we're never satisfied with what we have. And I think the Lord is changing me, and I hope he's changing many, many, many of us mm -hmm. to become more concerned about one another, mm -hmm. loving and forgiving. And the only way that we can do that is allowing Christ to come into our lives and change us. And when, when he does that, um, he begins to open our hearts to those that are around us. They're hurting people all around us, everywhere we turn. The sheer volume of it all is what discourages some people. They feel that, it, that their little bit won't make much difference. But it seemed to me the eternal reach makes the difference because that precious, precious person is one for whom you contribute and make a difference for them. So it's not just one person and that's it. It goes on and on. The most successful companies in the world are companies that sell a little to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think 
that that's the way we need to look at it. We have a million and a half orphans in Uganda. Mm -hmm. I can't look after a million and a half orphans, but I've started with a few, mm -hmm. and it's made a difference in their lives. And if we each do a little bit, we'll all do a whole lot. We want to thank you once again for showing children of the world the love of Jesus. May God bless you.
Give a cup of water to my little ones. Won't you show them that you care? Please show them that I'm there. Whatever you do for any of them, you know you really do. Save the 